Stephen Wilson, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. The 10th Porcupine Tree album, The Incident, is due to be released on the 11th of September and there is a palpable sense of anticipation among fans around the world after the critical success and popularity of Fear of a Blank Planet. What can fans expect from the new album? Well, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's as epic as you would expect. We, this time we've gone for something, um, I suppose in a way, kind of picking up uh, from the last record the sense of... Uh, a kind of more conceptual approach, um, longer tracks. And so this time we've actually gone for a double CD, and the first CD is a 55-minute long piece of music. And that 55-long p- minute piece of music um, is what I call a song cycle in the sense it has distinct music, uh, distinct songs within it that you can take out of context, but it's very much designed to be listening listened to as a kind of continuous uh, musical continuum and and that really is kind of picking up from some of the longer pieces we've had on the last last record certainly and trying to kind of take it to the next level of you know a long form piece of music so that that's um in some ways i think that's something that porcupine tree were always always kind of meant to do you know i think it seems to be what we do best when we work in these kind of long form pieces so we, we've definitely gone for the, the next level this time around. Fear of a Blank Planet was unashamedly a concept album. Is The Incident a concept album as well? Well, very loosely. Um, it, it, it's not the strong concept, perhaps, that Fear of a Blank Planet was. I think Blank Planet was an album that was very difficult to engage with without, at least in some way, engaging with the lyrics. In that sense, the concept was extremely strong and, and kind of very much dominated the music. I think it's the, the opposite is kind of true this time. The the idea to do the long form piece definitely came a long time before I had any particular lyrical themes that I wanted to deal with. And actually about 30 minutes of music was written before I even hit upon the idea of the incident. And the incident became a much more loose kind of concept. Um, there's everything from songs in there about my childhood to songs about religious cults to songs about child abductions and other cheery things and it, it's very varied but it does have a very loose kind of theme which is they're all events i kind of summarize it and say these are all things about beginnings and endings or, or things that you can say after this things were never the same again so it, it's much looser in the in the sense uh, that it doesn't have that same lyrical focus the fear of a blank planet had the incident is perhaps the most complex porcupine tree album to date and it's a very demanding album in the sense that there's absolutely no way that you can absorb it in one sitting i think i'm up to about 11 sessions so far with this album and each time i listen i get a glimpse of a new layer or a new musical idea for me the incident harks back to the heyday of the late 60s and early 70s when bands were creating these expansive masterpieces that have lasted 40 years what inspires you to make an album like The Incident? Well, I think you kind of hit upon it there yourself in the sense that this is the music that also inspired me. Um, there's a golden era. I, I look at it as a kind of golden era for album orientated music or ambitious album rock music that kind of runs from, let's say, Sgt. Pepper in 1967 through to uh, punk rock in 1977. So you have this wonderful 10 year window of incredible music when the album was really elevated to the level of an art form. And I still believe it is an art form and it can be an art form. Um, it can be, uh, an album can be experienced in the same way that a feature length movie can be experienced or like a full length novel can be experienced. Um, so in that sense, uh, Porcupine Tree is not the kind of band that will just write some short stories and throw them together we're all we're all about this long form novel or the long form feature length uh film and let's face it there are people all over the world now that are settling down with a dvd tonight they've made two hours they put aside two hours to actually sit down and watch a feature length movie from beginning to end why should they not do the same with a piece of music and i think you're right that the there are very often in these kind of more conceptual works there's there's an issue where whether you think it's a good one or a bad one where you perhaps need to listen to it more than once sometimes 10 20 times before you begin to kind of decode it and i think that's true of of any great piece of art is that if you can get everything you're going to get out of it almost immediately then and there's no reason to go back to it and that for me is a sign of a a rather shallow piece of art and i like the idea of these rather more in-depth more conceptual more epic more demanding 
more intellectually demanding pieces of music that you can still be listening to 50, 60 times and still hearing things that you've never heard before. And I think that, again, that's a sign of a, a, of a not necessarily a, a masterpiece, but certainly something which has had a bit more thought put into it in, in any art medium. So that's what I'm all about. And I think you, you mentioned there the, the 60s, 70s heyday. That really is the tradition you know, that I come from. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware of that music at the time, but it's certainly the music that I discovered when I was a teenager by going back into my, my dad's record collection and my, my best friend's brother's record collection. And that still really is, is the music I found mo- most inspirational. We seem to have these competing philosophies in the musical world today. Tom York famously said uh, a, a couple of weeks ago that the album was dead and Radiohead would now be releasing singles only for the rest of their life. You seem more committed than ever to the idea of the album as a musical medium. Which of those two ideas do you think will win out? Well, I don't. I mean, it's, it's probably going to be. The answer is probably both, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's like people when people said, you know, vinyl was going to disappear, and now vinyl's actually catching up again with CD. I think, you know, I was slightly disappointed with with what Tom York said because for me, that's like a brilliant writer saying he's never going to write a novel again. He's only ever going to write poems or short stories. Or it's like a brilliant filmmaker saying he's never going to make a feature-length movie again. He's just going to direct commercials from now on. There's something about the long form, as I said, there's something about the long form musical continuum, musical adventure that will always in some ways have more of an emotional effect or emotional kick than a short piece can have. That's my view. That's certainly the way I feel. And so I will always be committed. You know, even if music only ever becomes about, you know, downloading and software files as opposed to physical product, I will still be committed to the idea of longer pieces of music because I just believe there is something, there's more emotional resonance in the long-form piece than there is in a show, certainly in, in my music anyway. Uh, there's more emotional resonance, and I can put more emotion and more feeling and more dynamics and more power into long-form pieces than I can into short-form pieces.